If that's the case, it's a shame. But we'd still like to talk to Sheba. She ain't here. Ain't neither one of them here. When was the last time you saw your daughter? Did she run off with Nakia? She been home sick from school today. She got to feeling a little better and she went out a little while ago. Could you just get her to call us when she gets home, okay? Over at McCormick Place. Every good restaurant in town is booked. Listen, Mickey, if you got any pull somewhere nice, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, call me back. It's not them. The Dealey family? The dental and the adult males didn't match Carl Dealey's. That's great. At least the Dealey must be relieved. Oh, well, I, I didn't really tell him. I, I didn't want him to worry until I knew for sure. So I figured that I could get the dentist's name from the contractor's union's health plan. And I did. And? Well, I started to run Carl's credit cards and bank account activity. Good. And when you went to the house? What about their neighbors? You get anything from them? I couldn't shake Victor long enough to ask them any questions. Speaking of the devil... You go talk to the neighbors. I'll keep them here for a while. On my way. Oh, Connie, when your husband wants to take you out to dinner, what's your favorite place? A restaurant? Oh, that's easy. Schuler's. They have the most fabulous cabbage soup there and this apfel no, cooking no, for dessert no, 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 and... No, romantic. It's gotta be romantic. Oh, it is romantic. It's dark and there's candles on the tables and the waiters wear this sexy lederhosen and the owner is a real hoot. He thinks he's Thanks. a terrific... Go. You're welcome. What's the matter with this stupid thing, man? Every two days I need a new bulb and then it takes two weeks to get one. Bad wiring makes your bulb blow quickly. Here, let me, let me fix that for you. No, no, I got it, sir. Uh, no, no, thank you, thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> See, we got these heavy-duty unions here. They catch me letting you mess with this thing, no heat all winter will be my punishment, you know? <laughs> Mr. Dealey, I wonder if you'd join me in my office for a minute. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Uh, oh, Mrs. Krasick, this is for you. Oh. And, and where's that new father? I mean, with a dad who looks like Fernando Valenzuela. <laughs> As a new Hall of Famer on the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's out on a case, but you could wait for him in my office. Uh, yeah, oh, Mrs. Krasick, that's not only for you, that's for your husband, too. It's a, it's a foot roller. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned he was a salesman, and with you on your feet all day, well, boy, I know how that feels. I was a postman for 39 years. I don't think I could have made it without a foot roller at the end of the day. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dealey. Uh, the, uh, come on. Uh, well, she, uh, 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 this is person's man of her. Uh, hold on a second. Robert, call for your line three. Yeah, Davidson. What? All right, I'll be right there, man. City Impound, they got Suzanne Murphy's car. Yeah, I know her. Real skittish, jumpy little thing. Usually come in sometimes in the afternoon, but I ain't seen her like in a couple of three days or so. Anybody she come in with you know by name? Guys or girls? Guys, no. Sometimes she come in with this kooky looking girl with them, uh, braids in her hair, but usually she's alone. Yeah, used to come in wearing nothing but long sleeves all buttoned up, hot, cold, didn't matter. I used to tease her about it until I, I see one day what she was trying to hide. On both her arms wasn't nothing but, but just, just scars, like, like rows and rows of cuts. You talking tracks? You know, needle marks from shooting drugs? If they was tracks, I would have said tracks. I know tracks when I see them. These were scars from cuts. If you see her or her friend, please give us a call. Thank you. Thanks. Cuts up and down her arms. Is that some kind of gang initiation thing or something? I ain't never heard of nothing like that before. But I bet it got something to do with what we got going on here. What? Why? What do you think? I think we need to get a hold of someone down at Children and Family Services who's a little better versed in this kind of stuff. Oh, man. Voodoo and devil worship. Techniques of black magic. What is that? It's 
Bad news, brother. Sometimes I see Victor every day trundling around. Sometimes not for a while. The family is gone since uh, maybe two months or so. Maybe longer. Two months. Are you sure? Yeah. Did you happen to notice, um, was there like a, a big moving truck or, or anything like that? I'm sorry, young lady. I'm not a nosy person. And to be very honest, I've avoided them for years. <laughs> Why's that? <laughs> With Victor. If you show any interest, even just a low, he's here, day and night. Talk, talk, talk. Food, presents. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. He's a nice man. But ever since Beatrice passed away, he's like honey. Sweetie, sweet, sweet, then <laughs> sticks to your fingers. Sounds like he's very lonely. You get old. You lose the person you loved all your life. Sure, you get lonely. But if you start driving everyone around you crazy with your loneliness, you only end up lonelier. I understand. Thank you, Mrs. Kamba. Don't mention it. Hi. Investigator Karatsik, Chicago Police. Are you looking for Mr. Dealey? Yeah, Carl Dealey. I'm supposed to serve him this order to vacate issued on behalf of the property owner. Well, the owner, Victor Dealey. No, ma'am. According to this, the owner was a Carl Dealey, but he sold the house three months ago. Escrow closed last week, and the new owner's claimed someone's still living here, refusing to leave. May I? Sure. Children with PTSD, is this some proven thing or just something you guys at Children and Family Services thought up? Post-traumatic stress disorder? You mean like all those guys who came back from Vietnam? You think living in a project is much different from being in a war zone? Any 10-year-old you can ask can name God knows how many friends and family that have been shot to death. I just read something about this. The department issued a paper a few weeks ago. You're talking about Nikia Franklin. From what they've told me, I'd say she's exhibiting all the symptoms. What about the cuts? Well, I've never seen that with respect to PTSD, but anything's possible. Inflicting physical pain and dealing with physical pain is sometimes easier than dealing with emotional pain. Yeah, but this is a kid who comes from a very loving home. I mean, she's got a grandmother that would lay down and die for her. All the love and all the grandmothers in the world can't stop a bullet. Lieutenant? Lieutenant, can I talk to you? It's important. I think Victor Dealey's a bigger problem than we thought. Oh, tell me about it. I had to send him out on an errand or he would have driven everybody around here crazy. No, I'm serious. He's lying to us. I'm not surprised. What did you find out? Lots. Good afternoon, Mr. Monaghan. Good afternoon, Mr. Dealey. You are about to drink the finest cup of coffee you've ever had. My own special blend. Okay, he's lying. I'm starting to wonder if he knows he's lying. Well, I don't think he's the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm pretty sure he knows what he's saying. Ray, we're going back out to Cabrini, the grocer called. Nakia's friend Shiva's there. Oh, by the way, um, your buddy's back? Get him in here. Uh, Mr. Dealey, can you come into the lieutenant's office? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, have a seat, Mr. Dealey. Oh, thank you. Connie has come up with a lot of information about your son Carl and you. Oh, tell me, tell me, did you find him? Mr. Dealey, your son and his family have been gone for two or three months, not three or four weeks. And the house you've been living in belongs to your son, not to you. And he sold it three months ago. So what's the real story? You want to tell us? Sold the house? I, I didn't know. The real estate agent said that you met the new owners when she brought them over. No, th this, this couldn't have happened. 
Mr. Dealey, you've been telling me that it was your house. Why didn't you tell me it was Carl's house? But it is my house. For 45 years, it's, it's my house. Oh, my lawyer agreed with Carl that I should turn it over to him, but, uh, but to sell it? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is our home. We don't want to sell it. Your son sold your house. He moved. The house has been posted with an order to vacate. You can't live there anymore. <laughs> You're six years old, man, and your daddy gets shot standing on a street corner, holding you. He ain't on drugs no more, nothing. Then you're eight years old and you see your mama get stomped to death by her drug dealer. And then he shoots her just to make sure she's dead. Now you tell me how you're supposed to think. She, does she have a boyfriend or anybody she can run off to who she thought could protect her? Nikki ain't got no boyfriend. She got her grandma, her books, her brothers, and me. That's all that she got. So if her grandmother doesn't know where she is and her brothers don't know where she is, that leaves you. Somebody's got to know where she is. Sheba, you're going to lose a lot if Nakia isn't found, aren't you? What's that supposed to mean? It's your best friend. Someone who loves you very much. Someone you can trust. That's real rare in this life, isn't it? Tell us where she's at. We can get her some help, get her in a program. Yeah, but what about me? What happens to me when you take Nakia away, huh? Hey, we don't want to take her away from you. We want to keep her alive for you. I guess you better get these to Nakia, huh? She's probably pretty hungry. I don't know where she is. She just called me up and gave me a place to leave these. Folks, was Suzanne into religion? Oh, Lord. Why? What did you find? Well, I just found some books in the trunk of her car that had to do with alternative religions, so I... Wait a minute, Ida. Now, let's hear the man out. You know what? I think if we get on the road right now, Daddy, we might be able to get to St. Louis before Ida, we get too tired. think about it. Maybe it's different this time. This? What do you mean, this time? Has this happened before? Why didn't you tell me this had happened before? How do you expect me to help you if you don't tell me what's going on? Mr. Davison, we don't need your help anymore. And my daughter doesn't need your help anymore either. You know what? She's had about all the help she's going to get from anybody. We've had a terrible time with Suzanne Dablin and what you call alternative religions. Sir, is she in a cult? Is that it? Is she in a cult? Mr. Davison, we spent almost every cent we had. We borrowed from every relative and friend we got trying to get her out of this cult and then deprogram her. We spent a year trying to find her, then a year in private therapy. We're just about the end of our rope. We can't pay our debts. The end I don't of the want month. to give you the wrong impression, Mr. Davison. We love our daughter very much, but you know what? We can't take much more of this. I'm gonna drive first, honey, because I know you're tired. Ma'am, what if something else happened to her? I'm not so sure she ran off with another cult. Listen, she didn't take anything with her, ma'am. She didn't take any clothes or anything. And she wouldn't have abandoned her car either. She would have sold it. Cults just don't want recruits. Believe me, they want money too. Let me tell you something, Mr. Davison. Don't you even begin to talk to me about cults. This man right here and I know more about cults than you will ever know in your lifetime. No, sir, this case is closed. My daughter does not want to be found. She's out finding herself right now that is perfectly fine with me. She wants it that way, she's got it. Ida, you forgot the sweater. Leave it. It's Suzanne's. Let it go. Sir, sir, please listen to me, okay? This is your daughter we're talking about here. You can't just leave her out there, not until we know what happened to her. Okay, I'll be outside. I think I've got everything. Victor, what do you do with all of Carl's mail? Uh, there, there was any? No, 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 it's just junk mail. Oh, well... That's all that ever comes. 
uh, where are you gonna take me? I got some people who are gonna find you a real nice place, and don't you worry, I'm gonna stay with you till they do, all right? No. No, no, no.